Well, when I was growing up, you had to be 21 to vote. I turned 21 September 18th, uh, 1969. I registered to vote in December, two months later. And I voted in, if, if I can remember, every election that was open to me since then. I was in 1976. Uh, who was running at that time? I don't remember. It was exciting because my parent, my mom went with me voting, mm. and they showed me how to vote. So you know that was one of the things. And then of course she picked out the ones to vote for because <laughs> I wasn't up um, on top of you know who to vote for, what the issues and stuff was. So she was the person that uh, helped me through the mainstream. I'm going to say it might have been Jimmy Carter. I don't remember how old I was when Jimmy Carter got elected, <laughs> but it probably was Jimmy Carter. Actually, my husband, when I, when I, I was married at 19, and my husband was 21 at the time. So <laughs> he said, when it was time to vote, okay, um, do you have your uh, voter's registration? I said, no. He said, well, we're going to get it. So he really inspired me to getting my, my, my voter's registration card and, and voting because he's very political. So I followed suit. And after that, we participated in all kinds of campaigns and, and just stayed active. You know, um, I've never voted for anything other than a Democratic uh, president. So, I, you know, I don't even remember the first one I voted for. The vast majority of all of the Afro-Americans that I talked with was excited, ecstatic, exuberant, that we had uh, reached a point in this country that an Afro-American can be elected as president of the United States, where in time past, it, it, it was almost shut out of existence. And for this to happen, uh, I think it a, was a handwork moving uh, of a higher power. And my mom, you know, and I've heard a lot of senior citizens say that in their lifetime, they never would have thought that we would have an African-American president in their lifetime. So, you know, just hearing those stories and knowing that those people played a part and felt that they played a part in getting him elected was it's just awesome. After the election, I live in Archer, and I had several friends at my home, and uh, we did something silly. After it was announced, we uh, got into the car and rode all through towns with our heads hanging out of the window, yelling, Barack Obama. We passed about three or four police officers <laughs> and we just knew that we were going to get you know candid for that but we didn't they just looked and let us go and we came we would pass them one time and came back again and I tell you the feeling was just so so wonderful I was at the local uh, Elks Lodge, and when the electoral vote started climbing and started inching toward, I think it's 270, I left because I knew I, would, I was not going to be able to take it publicly. And when I got home and he got above 270, I just cried. I cried for three days. I don't think I left my house for three days. You know, and when it happened,
happen, it shows again, we restore the faith in our country that everything is possible. And um, a lot of people was shocked, crying, and, and was emotionally happy because they could see that there's changes is, you know, coming about. As you can see, little justice in the system, finally, you know. And they were very happy and very thrilled that they too was a part and witnessed the wonderful um, of a first black American non-president. I was shocked. It was disbelief. And I even went to Fox, which I very rarely go to. I, I was, you know, I remember what happened with the, four years ago with Gore, and you know, I went to bed thinking he was president. Woke up, and it, and I was like, oh no, please don't do this again. So I went to Fox. And I kept surfing all the different networks to, for confirmation. And, you know, it was one of those OMGs. Oh my God. Oh my God, is this really happening? People pray um, a lot because they, they, they hope that, the, um, that change would come about. And they felt their prayers was the answer too. You know, um, they really felt that, you know, uh, now you could see that we have hope. You know, the faith is moving on. You know, now you can really hold on to the faith. You know, because you knowing that the first American um, black president, well, President Obama, was reality. You know, something they could see. You know, a part of. I knew it would happen one day because I had seen this country grow from when I was a little boy until the present. And so it's inevitable that it will grow and continue to grow. There are forces out there that are trying to stunt the growth, but they can't stop the growth. And there's a difference. They can stunt it, but they'll never stop it as long as there's a Democratic Party in existence. This is the meaning of our liberty and our creed, why men and women and children of every race and every faith can join in celebration across this magnificent mall, and why a man whose father less than 60 years ago might not have been served at a local restaurant can now stand before you to take a most sacred oath. And with eyes fixed on the horizon and God's grace upon us, we carried forth that great gift of freedom and delivered it safely to future generations. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America.